So let's have a look at the AT Tiny 85 microcontroller. So this is an 8-bit AVR microcontroller with 8 kilobytes of programmable flash RAM. It comes in an 8-bit DIP package. This is what I've got here. Um, I think it does also come in a surface mount package as well, but I've got the DIP package. We can use the Arduino IDE to program this. It gives us up to six I.O. pins, two of which we can use for pulse width modulation. It can do analog to digital conversion. It has an onboard clock, so we don't necessarily need to use an external crystal. And it also has a universal serial interface, which can do things such as SPI or I squared C. So I thought I'd grab myself one and check it out. So you can see I've got it here on the breadboard, but the first question obviously is how do we program this? Now I've already told you we can program this with the Arduino IDE, but we need a way of getting the programs onto the chip. Normally with an Arduino board we could plug in a USB port, but when we're working with just a raw chip um, we don't have that option. So what we need is something called an in-circuit serial programmer. Now what we can use for that is an Arduino Uno. We can use the Uno to act as a programmer. And what we do is we burn a sketch onto the Arduino Uno, which configures it to work like a programmer. And then we can tell the Arduino IDE that we want to use an Arduino board as a programmer. And then when we upload the program, instead of uploading it to the Arduino board, it will upload it to this chip. However, the Arduino IDE out of the box doesn't support the 80 tiny 85 So we need to just do a little bit of configuration first before we get support for this chip. So let's take a look at that. So if we go to the file menu, down to preferences, you'll see we've got this option here for additional boards manager URLs. And what you need to do is paste in this URL here. I will include this URL in the description of the video. If you click OK to that and then go to Tools, Board and then Boards Manager. And then if you search for AT Tiny, you should find this one by David A. Mellis. Now you can see I've already installed it, but you get this install button here, so you just need to click that and that will install it. So if we come out of that, you should then see, again under the tools menu and board, you get some extra boards down the bottom here. See we've got the 80 tiny, 25, 45 and 85, and the 80 tiny, 24, 44 and 84. We'll, we'll be having a look at the 84 in some future videos but for now we'll need the 85. So that's got the IDE ready, but what we'll need to do next is set up our Arduino Uno to be a programmer. So the first thing I want to do is just make sure um, my setting is back to an Arduino Uno. You can see I've got the tiny selected, so if we just switch that back to the Uno, which I believe is up here, Yep, there it is. So we could see that the board is switched back to Arduino Uno on COM port 3, that looks correct. So next we can go to the examples and find the Arduino ISP sketch. And we can simply upload that to the Uno. So we need to connect the Arduino Uno over to our breadboard here and this chip. There's a few pins that we need to connect up. Pin 1 is down the bottom left here. So we've got 2, 3, 4 and then pin 5 is the top right pin as we're looking at it. And we connect that to pin 11 on the Arduino Uno. Then pin 6 goes to pin 12. And then pin
pin seven goes to pin 13. We then need to connect up the reset line. So I'll connect the reset line as pin one. And we connect that to pin 10 on our Uno. Then we're gonna need some power. So we'll take the five volts on the Arduino Uno. To the VCC pin. And then we'll take ground on the Arduino Uno. Over to the ground pin, which is pin four. And if you plug the Uno into the USB, and if we go to file examples basics, we can find the blink sketch. Now the standard Blink Sketch uses pin 13 and we don't have pin 13 on this chip so we're going to be using pin 0. So I'll just change these to zeros. Now if we upload this, um, but just before we do that, if we just quickly check on tools and make sure the programmer is set to Arduino as ISP. And then when we hit upload, it will upload it to the chip. Uploading and done uploading. So if we unplug our Uno you know, from the USB, just so that we haven't got any power on this whilst we're messing around with our jumpers and things and we can then basically disconnect everything all of our wires can come out now we want to blink an LED so let's plug in an LED Check that, want that that way around. I'm using a 470 ohm resistor to limit the current. So I'll take that on the LED down to ground. Now we said we're going to use pin zero, but that's not pin zero on the on the chip because there is no pin zero because we start numbering from one. It's the kind of internal numbering that the chip uses for its ports, for the pin numbers on port B. So we want to go from our LED and pin zero is this one here, is actually pin five on the chip. So it's pin zero in the software, but pin five on the chip. We'll need to connect the ground on the chip, the ground on our board. And we'll obviously need VCC on our chip connected up to our VCC rail. Now what I'm going to use is a little 5 volt regulator, the 78L05. And I'm going to put the flat edge to the, towards the bottom of the breadboard. By doing it that way, the input is here, the ground is in the middle, and the output is here. So I'm going to be connecting a 9 volt battery to the input, and we'll take the output up to our uh, positive rail, which will be 5 volts. I'm just going to have to stick a couple of capacitors in here. So 330 nanofarad capacitor on the input, so it goes 
from the input pin to the ground pin. I'm just going to use a 10 narrow farad capacitor on the output. If I can squeeze that in there. It's ground to the output. I'll take my output up to the 5 volt rail and we'll obviously need to take the ground down to the ground. And then what I'm going to use is a 9 volt battery clip. And I'm going to plug in across the input. I'm going to put in the ground. Which is the center pin. And the positive I'm going to put in the input pin of the voltage regulator. Which is that side. And if we connect up our battery, you can see the light is blinking. So that's our first look at the 80 Tiny 85. It's quite an interesting little chip, really. It's got a few advantages. Um, the obvious one is the physical size, the small footprint and low power consumption. I like the simplicity of it in that we don't necessarily need to use the external crystal. It has got those analog to digital converters, they can come in quite handy. And also the serial interface, so we can use I2C or SPI to connect up something such as a screen. So I'll see if I can incorporate this into some future project. But that's about it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.